our fifth storyteller tonight is someone that I've known distantly and came to rehearsal the other night and said, Dixie, do you remember how we originally met each other? And I'm like, I know, it's years ago, but I can't remember. And she said, you were camped with the Temple of Atonement at Burning Man. And she came to slave for a day, her first day in the scene, her first day as a slave. And she said, my first task was to put you in a sari. <laughs> Have you ever tried to put a sari on? It's like fucking 50 foot of fabric, like a bolt of fabric. And you gotta wrap it around. That must have been mindfuck class or something, because we really loved mindfuck at Temple of Atonement. I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry we did that to you. <laughs> <laughs> These days, she has titles like Ms. SF Citadel, Ms. SF Leather. She's progressed quite a bit in her career as a pervert. <laughs> and, yeah, okay, I'm not going to foreshadow the story, but please give a big welcome to Miss Bethy B. Now I'm like, oh my god, are they all expecting me to take my clothes off? <laughs> you do what you want. I'll just get my tits out. <laughs> so I'm here to uh, tell you a story tonight that is less of a story and maybe more of a public service announcement. <laughs> because I had um, almost the exact same identical conversation with four butches in two weeks. And that conversation was about how most butches, not all, can be a little bit clueless when it comes to a femme woman trying to hit on them. Because all of this that we put all that time and effort and work into to get the butch's attention, it gets their attention and it shuts their brain off. <laughs> so if you're a smart femme, you have um, cultivated a tactic that I like to call the butch clue by four. <laughs> because if you don't hit the butch over the head with the clue by four, you are not gonna get a date, let alone get laid. <laughs> so um, this story is inspired by a particular butch woman who I had a conversation with that was just that much more extra awesome. Um, we were at a restaurant and we were talking about um, how the kink community tends to go through these little fads. And right now I've noticed that there's a fad in the femme kink community and that fad is that femmes really enjoy some cock sucking. Like a lot. And um, it's kind of almost like a femme status symbol. Like if you can suck a dick you are the feminist goddamn femme in all of them. <laughs> and I support this fad. <laughs> I think it is a beautiful thing. So I'm telling this to this butch woman, and she's like, Really? <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, you know, the cock sucking thing. All the femmes are doing it. And she's like, Really? Like, yeah. And she goes, my cock sucked. I'm like, cool, you can totally do that. And she goes, how? <laughs> and I say, you ask someone. <laughs> and her reaction to this statement <laughs> was as if I had just suggested that she strip down naked and run screaming through Times Square with nothing but her cock on. Like she turned five shades of scarlet and she clutched her hand to her chest and she started sliding out of her seat and she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I'm like, I don't understand the problem here. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? You're a hot fucking butch. Nobody's gonna say no to that. Nobody in their right mind. You know, that kind of hot fucking butch. I'm looking at all my friend friends right here in this row right now because I know that they're going to 
know what I'm talking about. The fucking hard jeans and the crew cut and the leather jacket that makes that sound that's like halfway between a squeak and a creakle. <laughs> and the black boots. You know, the boots that say, come over here, little girl. Lick these boots and if you do a good job, maybe you get to suck daddy's cock afterwards. <laughs> Hot fucking Butch, can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> hallelujah, hot butch. God damn, so that's not the problem. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly the problem is not that someone's going to say no to that. So I'm like, so what's the problem? And she says, well, you can't just ask someone to suck your cock. It would be crass. <laughs> and that is a good point because, you know, every femme loves a gentleman. So um, I say, well, it's okay. You just look for the flag. So, for those of you who don't know, there's this thing that gay men started in the 70s. It's called the flagging system, the hanky code. Because gay men are horribly efficient at getting laid. <laughs> and they wanted to be able to walk around in Safeway and let people know that they were into cock sucking without having to actually shout it in the aisles. <laughs> which is generally not acceptable anywhere other than the Castro. <laughs> so, um, they would get a hanky and put it in their pocket, and you know, one side is receiving and one side is giving. I can't ever keep that all straight because I'm a switch. Right is receiving. No right is receiving, the left is the top. There you go. Somebody knows these things. Thank you. So, um, different colors mean different things, like blue is for cock sucking. Um, I am into burgundy, hunter green, black, and houndstooth. If you don't know what those are, come see me after the show, and I'll tell you. If you do know what those are, come see me after the show, <laughs> and I'll show you. So, um, flagging is fabulous, except for that if you're a femme, there's a little problem in that femmes don't tend to wear things with a lot of pockets. <laughs> And if we did, we certainly wouldn't put some big bulky thing back there because then no one can see our butt. <laughs> so there was no really good way for us to flag and tell people, hey, I'd like to suck your cock <laughs> without shouting it in the aisles of Safeway, <laughs> which is a little step above the butch clue by four. And it's just gone into the realm of tacky. So a friend of mine, had this brilliant solution where she started sewing little hanky flowers so you can still fly and look fabulous while you're doing it. So, this hot butch, I know that she knows about the hanky code. I know that she knows about flowers. <coughs> Apparently, the possibility that it might have practical applications in her life had never occurred to her before. <laughs> Like, she never made the connection that light blue cock sucking means yes, you, let's go get that on, make it all happen right now, hot butch. Hallelujah! Can I get a hallelujah? So, um, I tell her, you, you know, you look for the hanky flowers. Isn't that hard? It's right there in their hair because if a femme is going to commit to, like, wearing this hanky flower, she has to design an entire goddamn wardrobe around it. She is pretty dedicated to sucking your dick. She might not even like that color. And she's still going to flag it. So she's still like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't. She's sliding out of her chair, literally halfway out of her chair. And we were sitting next to a fire in this very nice restaurant, and the heat coming off of her face was like hotter than the fire next to me. And I'm like, okay, I understand. I understand you're a butch. All this comes at you, and your brain just kind of shuts down. It starts to melt out your ears, and you can't handle it all. So I'm going to help you out. The next time we're at a party together, and there's other femmes there that are flagging cock sucking. I'm going to tell them um, to talk to you about that. And here's how that's going to work. I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to say, Hey, see that hot witch over there? Hallelujah. <laughs> that hot butch I happen to know for a fact wants to get her cock sucked. 
and she's not going to come talk to you about it. Because she's a hot butch. Because here's the sad fact, my fam sisters, we do all this work and get all like gussied up and we want to be able to like just strut around and look cute. Hey, hot butch, come talk to me. And we want them to get that butch swagger on. You know that swagger, hey baby, what's up little lady? Yeah, that swagger only comes after they talk to you. <laughs> It's not going to happen before. <laughs> so you have to take it upon yourself to make that happen. So the way that works is um, you go up to said hot butch. You take the flower out of your hair and you stick it out into her face. <laughs> you do not use words because she cannot process them in that moment. So you put the flower in her face intentionally. You have to do it with intention, otherwise she'll think you're just waving it around like there's a fly in the air. So you... And then you put it back in your hair, and this is very important, you walk away. Because she needs a minute to like process that this all just happened to her. And uh, I also teach like the counterpart of this to my femme friends. When you walk away, it's very important that you don't just walk off. You have to walk away and you have to do it like this. <laughs> so that you know, that they know that you know that they were looking at your butt. As you were <laughs> Which looks fabulous because it's not all bulked up with a hanky. <laughs> So, you walk away, you give them a minute to like settle into all of that. Very important, you have to come back. Because they will not follow you. And in fact, they're gonna spend the entire night like circling in the room and avoiding you because if they come talk to you, they're gonna have to bring up the fact that you maybe wanna suck their car. So you have to come back and talk to them. And here's how you do that. I know you want to be all like subtle vixen, retiring, shy, you know, all that business. That's not going to happen for you. <laughs> you need to embrace your inner femme vixen in that moment. Your goddess of uber feminist. You, are, you can ram that thing, explode it out the back of my head, alien style, feminist femme of all of the land. And just swagger on up to her. And all you need to say is this. So, you and me. How about it? And that, my dear friends, is how to hit a butch upside the head with a clue by four. <laughs>